Hello friends, welcome to another YouTube episode. At this time, inspired by Reddit, a lot of people on Reddit ask me about how do I set, how do we set uh, the second round? Once you put up the first boulder, the king, queen line, like the, the outstanding line uh, with the volume placements and the draft and you tested it, how do you put like the second, third, fourth boulder over and around it um, with being creative and how do you get the most out of it? That's what we do this episode. So I think in general, the second, third, whatsoever boulder, you just gotta acknowledge and be aware and kind of embrace that you are limited. You got limited resources uh, and limited space, so limited options, so lower your expectations. The question was also how to set boulders just with limited hold sets. And uh, we didn't limit our holds for this episode, but we used, um, quite uh, efficient, uh, not that many holes, just functional holes and uh, some old holes as well. So uh, get a glimpse into that in a bit. So this is not a complete guide. That's more like guidelines, how we do it, some advice and showing you how we use uh, the existing features uh, to our best. And that's it what we do. We take a look at the space, what happened in the space, uh, what's given in the space, how can we use the space in a different uh, other way, uh, beta, what features, volumes are on the wall and most of the times we reuse the volumes in different ways, in different levels, uh, in different movements. Or not. Sometimes some people reuse like one movement and try to set different reiterations of it, permutations of one move for example. Um, I will show this to you in a bit. You can make one movement you set in the first draft a little bit easier, a little bit more difficult just to teach people, text stations, something like this is also an option, which we did not do in this video. So let's get into the first boulder and let's see what happens afterwards. This is the wall afterwards and the first boulder was actually this red one, fancy Photoshop. I only filmed it vertical, I don't know why, it was a bouldering night in January. Uh, Jake and I, we set this funky com-style boulder uh, on Wednesday for a movement class. It started with a toe catch and after the toe catch uh, foot plant. You can see Kai and Linus here trying to e execute the foot plant. Paul didn't need the toe catch. We could have tweaked a little bit more on this, but most people needed it. And you can see the boulder needed a lot of space left to right, but also like going out and into the wall again, smearing. So um, no possibility for too many new volumes and a lot of holes would have been in the way. Boulder number one, using the volumes in a different way, starting from the right side, stepping onto it, launching into a small box where you needed to be like pretty precise and bunch level five out of six easily level five out of six so starting at the volume then moving into this unknuckling using the volumes just purely as big feet and nothing added this one was one of my favorite bowlers in a long time because you needed to be so precise to arrive in that box it was set by toby once you executed that move, it was just perfect and you felt like really powerful and like you climbed really, really well. As you can see, the wall is probably like between five and 10 degrees overhanging. The volume stick out like 25 to 30 centimeters. Axes, edges, if you don't have them, get them. Blue holes, level four out of six. Example number two, there is a small footer on the left volume, a start hold on the first volume as well, and then a heel hook slash Toe hook on the right side of the volume. You could do both ways. Did not matter for that grade. I picked the heel hook because I don't have any body tension. Melina was able to use the toe hook. And again, without destroying the surface, uh, using the volumes in a different way for the start for a slightly easier movement, slightly easier boulder to finish the rest of the boulder old. Not that special, but always comfortable and well working directional axis holes. And you can see this jib here. You could have blocked it or made it uh, into a toe hook only hold, then it would have been a little bit more difficult. So I think for level number four, we were quite happy here. Toby then set just one more boulder on the left hand side, wide X cut slopers, uh, the classic beautiful set. Uh, easy moves or level three, four moves. And then the sector was fulfilled and 
done. As you can see, there are gyms which are probably set way more dense, but after our competition, no, like in general, we don't set that many bowlers, maximum three colors on top of each other, Tricolor, Jamaica, Tricolor, Jamaica, to have a better contrast, green never on top of red. Oh, that's just my personal opinion, but uh, anyway, let's go into the topic. What did he do? First and the most important, he did not destroy the red bowler. You could still do the toe catch and then afterwards the foot plant, nothing is in your way. So consider the bowlers which were there before and maybe set less smaller, uh, thinner, less protruding holes. Then he used the volume in two different ways. First on the red boulder, you slide and jump onto it from the left side, you smear on it, so you need both surfaces of the triangles, uh, the diamonds, free, so you don't smear on anything or step on anything. So with the yellow one, he used only the left side surfaces to get into a really interesting and body dependent position. And with the blue bowler, he added two chips on the volume, which were not in the way, he used the other surfaces, other sides of the volumes as well. So every single bit of the volume has been used. Uh, so whenever you see a resource like something big, you try to maximize it and then use it in different ways, in my opinion. You could have done many other things as well. Let's see what you could have done. Okay, let's do some theory crafting. We like this move and we want to have like different variations of this move, for example. Then we analyze, okay, this is a big side pull with one foot hold uh, to launch and step over, and then a side pull further to the right, uh, that far to the right, so we cannot span it, which forces the body to kick out to the right, so we establish an opposing force with these two volumes uh, to swap feet and kill the momentum. Now, this is our most extreme variation. If we want to make this possible or like similar in different levels, we need to exchange the left hand hold. And for this, probably a plywood volume, which we can use in all variations or another plywood volume where we add a lot of chips for other variations. In this case, we could keep the original hold on the right side, but also add another hold Example, this blue hold, it's a little bit further to the left, so maybe you can span it, maybe not, but because it's further to the left and still like oriented to the right, you don't have to swap your feet because your body will be left of the right axis and you don't have to do the foot swap. Another potential tweak would be just to make the foothold way bigger. This again is just an example because with a bigger foothold it's easier to launch over it. So we could make the foothold bigger and the handhold keep it the same. Maybe also make it into the volume. So you have like different variations already with this. Another variation would have been the flip uh, with a big foothold or the small foothold does not really matter. But as soon as we add a left handhold it's a little bit easier just to catch the left handhold with your left hand so you don't have to do the foot swap anymore then maybe we could have also uh, exchanged the volumes on the right hand side but this would have been like different options with different holes in different positions which were like same same but different another variation would have been we keep the first move then we have a side pull which leads us into palming down on the volume actually and then a higher left foot so for the first time ever we press and push and palm down on the volume with our hands uh, and the high blue top hold, you reach it with pushing and then it's a little bit like a flag, uh, palming down, flagging, you know what I mean. If you like the push and it's a great uh, different variation to use the volumes, you could also start like this, right hand on the volume, left hand side pull, uh, two different footholds and you can see the top hold moving. It can be on the far left, can be on the far right. Uh, it changes regarding the difficulty and what happens afterwards. Now we had a lot of smearing, pushing, a dynamic stuff. What about some balancey leaning into it? So we could have started on the right side and then with a foothold, which would have helped us, enable us to step onto the smearing surfaces of the volume, lean to the left, stand up to the next side pull, then maybe balance, lean a little bit over to the left, the big blue footer, and from there maybe a dynamic balancey move to the top. Okay, let's sum it up with my five kind of guidelines. Number one, don't interfere with the existing first boulder. If you didn't set it, 
talk to the setter uh, or, and pay attention while testing and tweaking which spaces, which volumes, which holes, which space should be free and shouldn't be used and shouldn't be played with. Number two, use the volumes in as many different ways as possible. See what has been done and see what else we could do. Three, let the space guide you. You see that there are spaces where you can put stuff and where you cannot put stuff. So you're restricted, limited in where you can actually put holes. So this creates spaces where you can be free and other spaces where, which are off limits. Uh, just use it as a help, as a guideline. Number four, don't overthink. Your limited, restricted space. You cannot create the most beautiful, the best boulder of all times. So don't put too much pressure on yourself and just deal with it and be aware and be happy with what you can achieve. At least like aim for something really high, but don't overthink, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Number five, let someone else take the space. Uh, if you've been setting the first boulder, the first draft, maybe another setter has another idea, another creative spark, how to use the space uh, slash volumes for another movement. And uh, they have like a just fresh reset, fresh, pair of eyes, not tired. Whew, you made it. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have more questions, want to see more videos, let me know in the comments. Uh, there will be more videos of Studio Blockmasters 2024 and how we did the setting. And there will probably also be a video about like climbing comps and why I don't like them. My name is Nikki. I'm out. Bye.